Ooh, Robbie G, what day is it? I think it's Wino Wednesday. <laughs> it is, it's Wino <laughs> Wednesday. Welcome everybody, I'm Gina. I'm Robbie G. And we are here, Wino Wednesday today, sparkling brute rosé made of the Syrah grape. There's yeah. so many things There's going on. There's so many things going on, so I'm not sure what to, what to say first. But what, what about this, Rob, what do we call this? this is we called it a right, right? <laughs> This is a, oh, this has got a <laughs> <laughs> lid. <laughs> Oh, I kind of like that sound. That shit's supposed to sound like a French woman sighing. Did Is you know it? That? Uh-huh. No, when it has a lid like this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're making that up. <laughs> no, I think oh, that's when you open a champagne. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's a new word he says. Um, very cool. Welcome, everybody. Um, if you're new to this and you have a YouTube account, feel free to ask us questions via the chat function. Um, and if you're not new to it, which I know there's a lot of you out there, hello, welcome back. Welcome back. Um, it's so great to see you, kind of. Yeah. Someday, Rob, remember? As soon as we can. I've someday, met pretty much all of you, though, so. You have? Yes. I have not met everyone. I, um, when we first started mm. in, well, a year ago, in March, Stop. We, yes. I remember just trying to figure it out, and I remember meeting like Carol and, and some others when they came into the shop um, in Del Mar when I was when I was Isn't helping that crazy? out there. Yeah, it was really oh my cool. gosh! You know we have to have a um, do we dare say like an anniversary episode mm-hmm. on the exact day <laughs> that was the first tasting? Do you remember what the first tasting was that we did? I don't. It was beer and cheese. Ah. I don't know why it was beer and cheese, but it was a beer and cheese tasting. Was it the one with the Pure Project where we had a cheese that they had made for us or something? Perhaps. I'll have to look back myself. There's been so many. Well, you know, what, so much. you know what it was? We had something scheduled and then we turned it into a virtual because it was like, I think it was already on the schedule at that time. It was crazy. Whatever. I'll have to go back and look at it. It's all good. That's all my blending guess. together. We've had lots of cheese, lots of beverages, and I'm happy to enjoy it all with you. Uh, so, without further ado, allow myself to pour myself, Rob. <laughs> Is that good? Allow myself to Just pour drink myself. Drink out of the bottle. Who cares? <laughs> that'll be that'll be one episode, right? <laughs> no glasses required. Did you see how cool these are? Yeah. Okay. So, anyone that's familiar with our Del Mar shop, it? yes, we have a little patio, and we wanted unbreakable glasses for the patio. So we got these cute little acrylic ones that say "Talk Curdy to Me" because that's what we do. Talk curdy to me, Vinissimo cheese. You talk curdy all day long. I do. I know. Guilty. Yeah, guilty. And there's Look a out. goat sheep and a cow and a little wedge, a wedgie. And a wedgie. Yeah, we like wedgies at Vinissimo. Um, so cheers, everybody. Cheers. Salute. You always get them. <laughs> I got a lot of wedgies, <laughs> thrown in a lot of trash cans, lot lockers, oh, no fun. Yeah. Poor Rob. That's why I am the way I am now. Explains yeah. a lot. Explains <laughs> a lot. So, do we so go? happy Wednesday. I'm I'm ready to to sip the brut rose. Brut mm-hmm. Syrah. Tell us about this. Yeah. Rose Delta. Sparkling. <laughs> Sparkling wine. There's a lot going on. There we is. were we were joking. So for so for those of you who have done some of these before, you've already graduated from our sparkling class from our rosé class from our syrah <laughs> class yeah we make it graduate this is yes. this is this is everything this right is here. all blended together right yeah but, uh, so this might not the answers to all of those <laughs> this is from a small uh, producer up in there in Healdsburg which is that town in the North Bay just north of Santa Rosa I think it's still Sonoma County as opposed to Marin County but it's right there in the heart of wine country lots of incredible wineries right, right there in that little area it's a couple and they make a a lot of european inspired stuff they um i know he studied in australia new zealand france and it's interesting that he's he's worked with a lot of the traditional grapes and he is working with syrah here and as we covered before syrah Mm -hmm. is native to france Mm -hmm. and it's but it is made everywhere in the world it's the seventh most grown grape and it's really really popular in 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 australia and new zealand and that's what they, they call it shiraz Syrah Shiraz. And so it's the same thing. Syrah Shiraz. Same thing, but delicious. Yeah. It's kind of fun. It's really fruit. It's much more fruity than when I think of the other champ- the champagne tasting we had. Yeah. The champagne was just totally much more dry to me. Um, much less of this kind of, I, want, I hate to say sweet fruit, but it is. It's a sweeter fruit. I think it's really, really delish. I'm liking it. This is wetting the whistle, Rob, perfectly. 
Per the cheek, perfectly. It's, I mean, I gotta it's say. Fun. It seems like more of a sunny, sunshiny kind of wine. I'm... It's been re- torrential down today, and it's like <laughs> freezing cold. Yeah, and here we have bubbles. <laughs> like a thing that we should be sitting out at a pool with. But inside. hey, it's always time for, for, wine, for a little sparkling rosé, I say. <laughs> it's always time for every beverage. <laughs> you, you made me think of a couple things. One about sweetness levels, which I wanted to talk about sweetness mm. levels. Because um, that goes with the name of the... Bubbles, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, sweetness levels. Uh, I also want to tell you about the cheeses that are on the plate because we don't want to talk too much before oh, yes, you dig in. In mm-hmm. fact, I'm going to do that now Then we're going to go back to the wine. How's okay. That? Is that cool? We can do that. Okay. While you do that, Mr. Cool Guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Kristen, these glasses are for sale. <laughs> right now at Del Mar. Um, but very fun. Anyway, I digress. They'll okay. be at Del Mar tomorrow, probably. They're there <laughs> they're today. Not, oh, are they? <laughs> they're there today. They're okay. just not nowhere else today. Yet. <laughs> okay. So, so the, to explain, I will be Vanna. The first cheese is the Briat Savarin, and there the names are on your lid as well. The Briat Savarin is the brie. It's the triple cream brie that is in a beautiful little chunk wedge mm. right there. The second one is the Pantaleo. The Pantaleo is this dry, yeah. really white whiter in color no rind kind of you know a little just, crusty it's like mm-hmm. it gets a little drier and crustier near the, it's like dried salt yeah yeah so that's mm-hmm. what that's what the rind is it's like that kind of dry crusty part um the third is the meredith marinated feta and that's in this little cup with a with a little spoon mm-hmm. to help you eat it the fourth cheese is called appenzeller and that is a really traditional alpine cheese it'll be the 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 last one we mm-hmm. taste and uh, so that oh yeah the aromatic one wedge. on the plate today <laughs> and then all kinds of fun accoutrements dried kiwi yeah I can't wait to try this I've not ever tried a dried kiwi that just looks like candy doesn't it, it? I almost <laughs> thought it was fake I'm like what are we doing putting like rubber <laughs> it looks like <laughs> those sour like candies doesn't it ah uh, yes highfalutin sour candy <laughs> there's a uh, there's fresh blueberries fresh raspberries our signature rosemary. <laughs> the, the paste in the middle is a guava paste. Yeah, guava. So that's mm-hmm. going to be fun. Did I say it wrong? You did. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Yina. All right. Whatever. <laughs> then the uh, crackers, of course. These are um, chocolate covered, what? <laughs> Hazelnuts, maybe? It, or, or are um, they? Aren't they? No, they're not the almonds. They're These not almonds. They might be the chocolate covered hazelnuts today. We will taste them and find out. There's chocolate covered something on uh-huh. there. It's, it could it's be Kiko's too. It could be a. Mm. Try Shall it. I go in right now? Yeah, go in. I know it's going to be good with the mm, Kiko's. Right, right. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> chocolate covered corn nuts. Skills. Chocolate covered Kiko's. That's why I'm the professor. Mm-hmm. I think that covers everything on the plate. Mm-hmm. So we'll taste in order. If you're dying to get started, start with the Briat Savarin. We'll talk about that in a moment spread it on some uh, on a cracker or whatever you've got um, oh there's also apricots there um, i wanted to talk a little bit more that sweetness about the wine mm-hmm. and you mentioned like the um the flavor profile some of the i, I was reading about this wine and I, I just sometimes i like to see what the the flavor the notes are with and i read um strawberry but i read watermelon i thought that was interesting that seems like the like the i don't hear watermelon a lot not too much in wines but now i don't know if it's because you said that <laughs> or because i really think it does smell a bit like watermelon watermelon in like a strawberry-ish watermelon What's that new, What's that song with um? Oh no! Don't do Harry it! Don't, don't 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 don't! What a minute! No stop! Now it's gonna be stuck in my head. This happens and no. Well, I'm so we're sorry. Not going there. But we know the song. Let's go strawberry fields forever. Oh yes, that's that. really okay. good. good. Right? Pretty good. Touche. I'm trying to keep up with you. Touche. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Sweetness levels. So oh, this is a brute level. Wait, and you're before to before I even I forget to mention every bottle. We don't. They donate. Oh yeah. One dollar to mm-hmm. Surfrider Foundation. Yeah, which is super cool. And another dollar to Cool Effect, which mm-hmm. is another environmental cause. Yeah. So they're very much into saving the environment. Yeah. So then they support it with sales of the wine. So you helped support that today too. Yeah. So that was uh, that was awesome. Yeah. It makes uh, it makes yes. wine drinking even more fun. <laughs> sweetness levels. We hear so much sweetness levels. They're always in the name, the label on the wine. This is a brute. A brute. So where is this on the sweetness scale? So we gonna we're gonna start with the the driest. Okay. The driest is called extra brute. Extra. That's the driest of the dry. Okay. So it's doesn't extra, uh, brute. extra brute. It doesn't matter where it's from. A bubbles or champagne. I should see extra brute and know that's really dry. That's the driest of the dry. Okay. The second driest is brute. Mm-hmm. The third 
dry us as we're getting sweet. Mm -hmm. Am I saying that sweeter? right? Yeah, that we're getting sweeter now. Mm -hmm. um, the number three is extra dry. So that's, that's so where it's confusing. confusing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who came up with this? They were drinking too much and decided, oh. Like, exactly. Yeah, so why, if we, if we call it dry, why is extra dry, dry not the, the driest? driest? Like, I don't know, it's just weird. Okay. But extra dry is Middle. sweeter than brute. <laughs> That's going to be confusing. And That's as we the get, trivia question. As we get sweeter, do we have any trivia stuff to give away today? I shouldn't, if, if we don't, I shouldn't have brought it up. <laughs> We're going to have two of these glasses. Ah, very nice. Nice. Okay. Okay. But we don't know what the we don't answer is going to be yet. We don't, don't even know what the question is yet. <laughs> okay, so it goes extra brute, brute, extra dry, then sec. I've heard, seen sec before, okay. And then it, as it gets sweeter, it goes to demi-sec. Uh -huh. And then the sweetest is do. Do. D-O-U-X. <laughs> How do you do? Uh, it's like... That's the sweetest. Hot shots part do. <laughs> Is that uh, is that how you say it? D O U X. I think so. D O U X. Does anyone know? Duh. I bet you go. Duh. 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 Do I have to do that? I think so. Snobby. We. Oui. Do. Mm. So I always thought demi sec was sweetest personally. So now I've learned it is not. So now maybe I know the extra dry is right in the middle. Maybe the do is so sweet that it's that you don't see it very often. Maybe, maybe yeah. the sweetest things that they usually carry at at Bevmo's and other wine shops are the, the demi sec. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But those are the levels. That's the level. Well, I like brute level, I'm going to say. Yeah, brute. And, yeah, and I usually I, I find that most most, most varietals are, in most styles are made at, at most levels. Like even, even champagnes, you can find sweet champagnes and really dry champagnes. Yeah. And so, um, so if, I mean, don't, don't buy into the, I don't know, any of the stereotypes of like a certain wine is sweet or, or this or that, because you can probably find that varietal in other levels. Which we learned with Riesling. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And like even mm -hmm. Gewurztraminer. Yep, other. exactly. Well said. Go words to me. <laughs> I said it really fast because I wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah. All right. You know good. You know good. So, should we get to the cheeses? We should. We shall. I will prep yours for you, Professor. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. oh. Cheese number one out nope. of the gates. Numero uno is the Briat Savarin. And the Briat Savarin comes from, just to remind you, it's the Brie looking one. I mean, it kind of looks like, like creme fraiche butter had a baby and that's that's what yes. that's what this is it's a triple cream from normandy in france it is named for a guy um who wrote a book called the physiology of taste mm -hmm. his name was jean anthem Briand. Briand. Savarin. Savarin. <laughs> Savarin. He may have had a couple other names in between. Like, yeah. he may have had more names than that more middle names he sounds very official <laughs> he but he was the cheese, this cheese was first created in 1930, which was about a hundred years after his death. So he was around, you know, in the 18th 18th. century or okay. so. Okay. And uh, he was, he was like the Anthony Bourdain of the, of the 18th century. And uh, he, so he wrote a book and he also, he's, he's, he has a lot of famous quotes, like some about cheeses and wines about yeah. kind of like gluttony <laughs> eating <laughs> and, it's and, my kind of book <laughs> and uh, he was a big lover of truffles so he's the guy mm -hmm. that said um, truffles are the diamond of the earth mm, he coined that okay he said that he said um, something along the lines of you tell me what you what you eat and I'll tell you what, what you, you are, are. Ah, so Brie Some, never something like that a yeah. famous man you know what that would be a great movie idea let's pit bring a Bria Savarin, on all you to life, and hook him up with Anthony Bourdain. That would be cool. You know, wouldn't that be good? There was we a, could have a conversation. I love or hate Woody Allen. I'm not gonna. I don't care about his personal life. I'm talking about that. But he has a movie called Midnight in Paris. Mm -hmm. Remember that was mm -hmm. the kind of the premise on it. That's what's so cool about fiction. That's it's like true. You can make anything happen. So you're saying it's been done? Can't no, on. I'm saying we should do it with food because he did it with like writers and artists. Right? Because it was did, like that's right. um, Gertrude Stein and all of Yes. And, and it was uh, like the, Dali. It was Dali <laughs> and, and, Dali. and um, who wrote Fitzgerald and all the, yeah. all the expats, like right. Hemingway, all the guys that were in Paris at yeah. that time. Which is so, so super good. There's a really good book. Mm -hmm. We're digress here. 
So there's an author called um, David McCullough, uh-huh. and he's done a lot of presidential biographies and it, like, a lot of great his, um, histories and in, in, in bios, but he has one about Americans in Paris in the 1920s. It's an awesome book. I highly recommend it. Sounds like an era I would have wanted to be there. Yeah. Like, right? You know, just with the cocktails and the... I just think of like... And the food and the writing and the like poetry. Fitzge- his, like Zelda Fitzgerald wearing a dress and like yeah. the and 20s and the... Yes, how freaking awesome. We, um... Uh, we're by the way, cheese. Kristen Evans said you pronounced do correctly. Oh, good. Thank you, Yay. Kristen. Woo. She had just learned about it, so this is so good. <laughs> Yay. How do you know? You don't stand corrected. <laughs> well, I just, I just made a guess and I got, I got lucky. The um, Briat Savarin. Yes, what do you I think? just had a bite. It's, um, it's, it's amazing. It's I, amazing. I can't imagine. It's, it's milder. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's, but that's what it's supposed to be. It just tastes like, like fresh. It does kind of taste like creme fresh to me. Creme fresh. Do it with the rosemary. Highly recommend it. I yeah. did that. Did you notice I did. that for yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I would do it with the raspberry because I think raspberries and bubbles go so good together. I know people typically say strawberries, but I think raspberries. Personally, mm. we can't both eat. So oh. <laughs> no one's talking. Sorry, I beat you. <laughs> yeah, you did. That's shocking. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I love Brie Savarin. So triple cream brie, tell the difference between that. Like what makes it a triple cream? Yeah, so it's um, brie's, when you, when you get into the double and triple creams, it is a, it's just a distinction. And it's, it refers to the percentage of butter fat in, that's in the cheese and sometimes it can happen naturally like you can have a a double cream cheese naturally and a double cream is 65 to 75 percent butter fat Mm -hmm. triple cream is over 75 percent so it's like a 75 to 85 percent or so and good thing a triple cream won't happen naturally so the cheesemaker will they will scrape off some extra cream from the process they'll scrape it off the top and then they'll throw that cream in in with the curds nice and yeah and then you get this texture that's how you get added cream when you see that in a cheese Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. nice. and so it'll make it extra sweet extra buttery extra rich and uh so good super smooth this is the quintessential pairing with bubbles yeah a triple cream brie brias avaran being a favorite Delice de Bourgogne, if you're fans of that, Pierre Robert, San Angel. Yeah. There's a lot of them out there. Mount Tam. Yeah, California. I was going to say, you can go for right. American cheeses, too. Mm-hmm. There's uh, Mount Tam from Northern California. There's, uh, what, what are some other ones? There's uh, St. Stephen is one from Ooh. New York. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's, a, there's quite a So quite many a few. choices. And all just perfect. And I always say, Rob, to me, it's because the uh, cheese is so creamy mm-hmm. on your tongue and it coats the tongue. And then here come the little scrubbing bubbles of the, mm-hmm. <laughs> the champagne to just wash them away and they kind of mix together and it's just really delish. Yeah, it's a very it's a very textural pairing. Mm-hmm. It's on the textural end, but it also yeah. you also get it if you can get a nice contrast in flavor too. You have the salty tanginess of the cheese and then you have like the acidity and the fruitiness oh. of the wine as well. So, there's yeah. a lot going on. Yeah. It's hard to screw that one up. It is. And you can do anything with it. Now, I just see you put the guava <laughs> yeah. um, jam on there. Yeah. Should I go for it? You should go for it. I did the raspberry. I'm going to do the rosemary in a second, just because anything with the rosemary we have decided is the best. Mm. Um, Kristen, hey Kristen, loves the raspberry as well. Mm. Um, I think the ro- the raspberry, I can't say now raspberry, <laughs> with the rosemary together would be good. And somebody's got to dive into the kiwi, because remember last time we had fresh kiwi on yeah. there? Why my throat started really Yeah, tingling. that was interesting. I didn't know you were. Do you were... think the candy will make me do it too? Maybe. We'll see. All right, let's find out. <laughs> I'm taking it. It's like... Do you think it's gonna make me sick? Let's find, let's let's try it. Let's try it. <laughs> <laughs> How did my mom survive? <laughs> um, right, that we'll was delicious mm-hmm. though. I don't always go for the briat, but I should. I should go for it it's more. It's kind often. of good. Yeah. yeah, I forget it about it too. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, eat the, and eat the rind. Oh yeah. You don't have to, but I would recommend trying yeah. it. Yeah, I hadn't tried it yet. Is yeah. it? Um, and the rind. I mean, it's not too bitter. It doesn't look. It looks so fresh and white. And when it looks that way, it doesn't have the bitterness. Sometimes it gets a little brown, uh-huh. and that's when that cheese has aged a lot longer. Mm-hmm. And that can sometimes be bitter. But some yeah. people really like that. They like it at that stage, right? Yeah, and the, I can see on, on our piece, the rind is kind of like separating oh, from yeah. the paste a little mm-hmm. bit, and that's a sign of ripeness as well. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it's a really interesting thing. We talk about how these soft cheeses are also called soft ripened cheeses, and that means they, they soften up over time. And uh, leaving a cheese out will also kind of accelerate the ripening. It'll, it'll ripen a little bit right in front of your eyes. And, and yeah. I think that's what happens as it comes to room temp. And that's kind of a good tip, I think. Like, I do it with Camembert, Rob. Like, if I get one that's not ripe mm -hmm. enough, and you can tell because it's still really firm, yeah. um, leaving it out at room temperature yeah. accelerates that, just that higher temperature. Yeah. And if something's really ripe, make sure you keep it really cold because, again, you don't yeah. want it to ripen any further mm -hmm. than it is. So temperature plays such a role. If yeah. you have a if you have a camembert and it's nowhere near ripe, it like I mean it's it's like a week away. You can literally leave it out of the fridge for a day, and it's and it's fine. Mm -hmm. I mean as long as it's not like you know in hundred degrees or something, yeah. you're you're fine. Although Rob, I love to say it, cheese is not mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. It yeah. doesn't spoil like that. It was created right. to not spoil, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. That's what the salt's there for. Yep, yeah. yeah, you got that right. Okay, what I could eat griot all day. I loved it with all, everything. Oh, but I didn't try it with the guava. I'll do that. It was, it. okay, it was really good with the guava, or what'd you call it, guava? <laughs> <laughs> it gave it a really nice like tropical oh, and kind yeah. of like a little bit of uh, mm -hmm. I don't know just a nice balance to the cheese tropical. I liked okay. it nice tropical flavor mm -hmm. felt like George, I was on the beach our friend George likes it with the guava and the rosemary ah. together oh and with fresh fruit so we're making a buffet <laughs> and, <laughs> George is doing the buffet approach which I like and good to hear from you George mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna dive right in and try that while Robbie goes to the next one Okay, so the next one is the Pantaleo, mm -hmm. and that's to remind you this this white yeah. hard cheese. No rind on that one. Yeah, it just gets kind a of. little drier and, and like crustier around mm -hmm. where the rind would be. Oops, <laughs> having accidents here. Pantaleo, I love this one. You know what? To me, okay, this is Italian first, right? Yeah. Isn't this Sardinian? Am I yeah. correct? <gasps> Trying to dig back into my folders. I don't have the collection that Rob has up there. So I'm trying to remember back, but let's. T we should test you. Oh, <laughs> to stump the whiz, right? Um, but goat. We're going to the goat. Yeah, yeah. Well, so that's kind of fun. Gina, can you name? Can you name two other cheeses from Sardinia? Oh, you're gonna stump me. <laughs> Give me a second. My mouth is full. <laughs> <laughs> so she takes a bite to delay. I see how she does it. Pantaleo mm -hmm. is from Sardinia. I'll give you a couple mm -hmm. seconds to see if you can think of anything. Mm -hmm. But um, I will say this. Maybe this will be a hint for you. <laughs> it's similar to other cheeses from the region, just different milk type. This is goat's milk, which makes this unique. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, so Pantaleo is made in the style of another really famous Italian cheese. Don't, are you Googling? No. <laughs> No. And, and, uh, and so that it's, it's from Sardinia. Sardinia is the second biggest island in the Mediterranean. It is a, it's an island. So um, they, and it's, it's in the Mediterranean. So it's, it's a, it's not the kind of a pl place where, where cows would, would be or where they would be happy, I should say. So most of what we have there, if not everything that comes from there is sheep or goat's Goat. milk. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest island in the Mediterranean is Sicily. So Sardinia is the second biggest. Yeah. And, have you um, ever been? I have not been to Sardinia. No, you have. Either. No, not Sardinia. Oh, mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Just mm -mm. Sicily. Where did you go? Yeah. Corsica then? Corsica, oh, yes. Which okay. I can tell you what was from there, but now I cannot get what is from Sardinia. I'll, okay, I'll tell you. Oh, so I'm gonna bug, I'm gonna yell too. So two really well-known cheeses from Sardinia that we, we carry usually. One is called Fiore Sardo. <laughs> and that word, Fiore Sardo, means the flower Flowers. of Sardinia. So I didn't lose everything. Yeah. But. <laughs> and Pantaleo is made in almost the exact same way that Fiore Sardo is, which is a pecorino. So it's, you know, we, t we typically think of goat's milk cheeses as soft, crumbly, kind of more moist cheeses, more like, like this... Um, more like the feta, which we're going to taste exactly, next. Exactly, which we'll get to, yeah. Um, but the but the pantaleo is a good example of what can happen with goat's milk if you if you make it in the style of a of a pecorino, pecorino with sheep's yeah. milk cheese, and if you age it a little bit. Um, so you what you're going to get is the goatiness, the tang a little bit on on the finish, and you don't quite get all that like the real rich or gaminess of yeah. sheep's milk. It's a, to me a little bit sweeter. Sweeter, a little drier. Tangy. To me, this used to be, Pantaleo used to be, if I sniffed it, Rob, I was like green beans. Mm. I don't know why, but I get like mm, sauteed green beans whenever I think of Pantaleo. And I don't know again if it's because it's stuck in my head and that's what it always is. Mm. But anyway, 
Um, I kind of like it. You could grate this just like you would yeah. um, a pecorino on a pasta dish. Now or that's a good tip. Yeah. Like, and I, mm-hmm. that's that's that goes for, you know, you, you, when we think of grating cheese onto a pasta or something, you think, oh, it's got to be Parmigiano Reggiano or a pecorino Romano. Mm-hmm. No, try a gouda. Mm-hmm. Try an aged gouda mm-hmm. or try something like this, a pantaleo. Try something different. Try manchego. Yeah. Any of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So different. So delish. And it, it stands up to the, whatever you shave it over, mm-hmm. I think. That's what I love about this. Yeah. It's tangy. The, uh, the other cheese from Sardinia I was going to mention is called Moliterno. Did you know Moliterno? You know Moliterno is from Sardinia. No. Uh, <laughs> I just drew a complete blank that that is the case. <laughs> Mol- but now that you say it, I'm going to say it. Oh. Moliterno is another pecorino, mm-hmm. except that it's infused with black truffle. So there's these huge streaks of black truffle. Yeah. Rivers, yeah, it's Rivers so truffly. Yeah, I mean, and you can get a you can get a piece of Moliterno, and it'll be like, it has like a, I mean, I don't even know how to know how to describe it. rivers. Rivers, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> flowing rivers, rivers of, of truffle. truffle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Sardinia, so I like it. I'm gonna try this with the guava. The guava's being yeah. a big hit right now, Robert. Everyone's loving guava. I mm-hmm. really loved my bite of guava in the briat. I'm gonna mm-hmm. try the guava with the pantaleo mm-hmm. and. I think it's going to go really well because mm-hmm. I have like a little, when I took my, my bite of the pantaleo on its own, there was a little bit of like a little, like it kind of would have needed some, or not needed, but it would have been helped out by a little bit of moisture. I think so too. Moisture. It's almost like a wine that's really tannic and it kind of dries your mouth out. Mm-hmm. The pantaleo does that. Mm-hmm. I agree. It's oh, yeah. awesome with the guava. <laughs> and yeah. the guava is awesome with the delta. Oh, yeah. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It has, um, I mean, it just... It's just tropical. It tastes like passion, yeah. passion fruity kind of. Yeah. Let's pretend it's not raining and we are <laughs> in Jamaica. Well, the funny thing is, yeah. tomorrow it'll be probably seventy-five. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, like don't forget all about today. Yeah. One day of this is fine. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's good. It's good for the for the plants. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, good. it's good for Balboa Park. Mm-hmm. All right. So that uh, mm. everybody's liking the the pantaleo. So I really like how. How different we went. We went with um, triple cream, French yeah. triple cream, and now it's the aged mm-hmm. goat's milk. And uh, let's let's go into the next oh, yeah, one, the feta, which is the feta. Which you know you can't technically call feta anymore. I think they just call themselves Meredith cheese now. Meredith marinated cheese. Really? I think they got busted by the feta people, Robin. You can explain why. Yeah. So mm-hmm. feta is a supposed to be a Greek cheese, and um, so it's feta was finally protected. We, you probably heard us talk about these uh, systems, these, these regulatory systems that protect and control the names of cheeses, also wines uh, in, in, in Europe. And France is really protective. Italy is very protective. Um, Greece, I, I don't know, maybe they just didn't, didn't care so much until recently. Yeah. And, but actually to Greece... feta as their own. It originates in, in Greece. <laughs> But, but Greece didn't come up with their own system. It's actually protected by the European Union. Ah, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And I, I want to say 2005 is when they did it. And then just because they, they say, hey, this cheese needs to, it's protected, this name is protected and it's supposed to be made this way, it's supposed to come from here or there, it doesn't mean that any, anything really happens. It's kind of like, you know, Brown versus Board, the Board of Education didn't change anything in 1954. Mm-hmm. The Civil Rights Act was kind of helped things along, but still things are changing. <clears throat> it was kind of like that. Gotcha. It's a start. If you if you yeah. catch my drift, I get your drift. Mm-hmm. The the um. But finally, so what that what they said for feta is that feta must come from Greece and it must be at least seventy percent sheep's milk and the remainder can only be goat's milk. Mm. I don't know what the percentage is on this, but this is not from Greece. <laughs> a, it's not from Greece, and B, it's probably not that mix. <laughs> yeah. It's a long way from Greece. It's actually from Australia, yep. from the province of Victoria, and uh, it is, um, it's delicious. I mean, just just because a cheese is not, doesn't fit into like the, tri- the um, doesn't get to be called a certain name, it's okay. It's a feta style. It's a feta style cheese from yes. Australia. Exactly. Oh, and it is good. Rob, I gotta, oh, no, none for you. That's all you're gonna get. Because I'm gonna eat the rest of that. <laughs> and they and they marinate this in olive oil, herbs. Is it? Yes. Is there garlic? Yes, a little bit. Do you know what all's yeah, in that? Garlic. I don't know all of the herbs that are in there, 
But I'll tell you what, I mean, you could, a lot of people try to make this kind of a marinated fresh chev, mm. but is that just not, it melts in your mouth. Mm. You can spread it so easily on the cracker. Mm. And that oil, you guys, if you buy, it comes in a jar. It's like a 12 ounce jar. So good. That oil you can pour on a salad, like a salad dressing. Um, I'll just do it on pasta, mm. um, but you will, n or dip a piece of baguette in it. I mean, that probably is number one, number one favorite thing. Um, so but it's good. so good, right? Every little bite of that goes, and that's kind of which it, to me, it has a lot of goat in it because I do. Feel I don't know what that. the percentage is mm -hmm. on it, but it, it doesn't really mm -hmm. matter. I mean, it's it's delicious um, because it's a, it's just a feta style cheese. The fetas in the the traditional fetas, one of the things that has to happen for it to be called a, a traditional feta is that they're, they're they get aged in oh. in barrels and you've been there you've yeah. seen that yeah i've seen i've visited a few mm -hmm. of these producers in greece and they just like a well like a wine barrel or a whiskey barrel and uh i mean they open it up and you you just see like this feta and it's kind of like floating in its own way basically mm -hmm. And uh, and so there's no real rind that forms because it's inside of this of this barrel. Um, this one they say it's about two weeks old, and so it's feta is kind of like it's it's considered it's on the border between is it a fresh cheese is it an aged cheese? It's I, I wouldn't call it more of a fresh cheese because um, an aged cheese is something that is obviously ages, but the the age will the fact that it's 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 affected by its environment the the environment that it's in causes a rind to form so the rind is something that forms as a natural protective layer interesting and the way yeah. they make traditional feta is that they they kind of protect it from that and and one of the ways to uh, identify a fresh cheese is that it is rindless they're not aged so there there's no time for the rind to form to develop yeah and so other examples of fresh cheeses are mozzarella, ricotta, mm -hmm. burrata, and these are all cheeses where, from Aus Blanc from France. Yeah. These are cheeses that when you go into a cheese shop, usually they're in a bucket or a, or a container. Of the way, the, the brine, excuse me. Not and way. that's how brine. feta is, yeah. you always see feta. Yeah. And like, for in this case, it's in a jar mm -hmm. of, of oil. In a jar, and this is interesting, because we've always talked, because in making cheese, salt is the preservative yeah. to just keep the cheese fresh from, you know, turning sour, going stale. Fresh cheeses don't typically last. If they're just swimming around in yeah. the brine, they're not gonna last mm -hmm. more than a week or two, say. Mm -hmm. But you put it in oil, and this can last months. Yep. It's crazy, right? Yeah. It's the, the science of the food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it, I was gonna, it, these these will last forever. I mean, this, the salt helps too, but I mean, if you, if you get like a, um, you know, a, a burrata, mozzarella, one of these, and, if you, especially if you make it yourself, that thing goes bad so in fast. like a day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the ones that we get, they, they know exactly how to package them and how to salt them to make them last the, you know, the mac, like, you know, as long as possible. Yeah. But, uh, but if you get like a real fresh cheese and, and you know, it's, it's, it's like fresh off, fresh from the cheese maker, uh, or if you make it yourself, it's, you've got hours on that thing. Yeah, um, it's so true. But well, quite Italy though, <clears throat> You get the fresh cheeses that day. The mm -hmm. farmers bring. You don't. They don't save it to the next day. Mm -hmm. Same thing. They're making it so fresh the real way. They don't preserve it in any style. Well, it has to be fresh. That's why it's so hard for us to get fresh yeah. cheeses. Is because they're they they're so perishable. They go bad so fast. There's a lot of people that come mm -hmm. in and they're like, oh, I had this uh, fresh soft cheese in, in this place I visited and I'm like well every, every place has their their fresh cheese yeah you know every every place has uh, something yeah. every similar culture, yes, every culture exactly. does I mean mm -hmm. India Mexico everywhere they, right paneer paneer exactly yeah I mean from Aus Blanc ricotta is the Italian yeah um, right German Germany is quark quark that's right my cheese uh -huh. name was Quark Twain for a while. Oh my gosh. What did you, you had one the other day, OG <laughs> Billy Crystal. I wrote that down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I'm glad you liked it. Oh yeah, I liked it. And um, <laughs> so speaking of traditions and they do certain things in certain places, like in, in Southern Italy where they make mozzarella, they, they recook the way to make ricotta. Mm -hmm. So it's a so byproduct, nice. nothing, nothing goes to waste. They, they do something similar in Greece where they make the feta each of those facilities, I, I visited maybe four or five of them. I dro drove around Greece and I just, I, I was like 
visiting cheesemakers everywhere I went. They, it, it's very homogeneous. They do a lot of the same mm-hmm. things. Like when we went to Sicily, they, did you notice they do a lot of the yes, same style exactly. of cheeses? Mm-hmm. So You do see parallels anywhere you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so in Greece, they make feta, and then they, they also make yogurt on site. They, also, they always make Greek yogurt mm-hmm. anywhere they make Delish. feta. Mm-hmm. And then instead of um, throwing away the whey, or, or recooking it to make a ricotta. They, they recook it to make something similar to a ricotta, which is called mizithra. Mm-hmm. And which go ahead. We have to know. I know what you're going to say. The most famous dish of mizithra. <laughs> the one everybody comes to the shop Actually, to buy mizithra for. That's our trivia question. First okay. person, first person ah. who can answer that. Yes, there it is. What's the most famous mizithra dish? That's mm-hmm. a good one. That's a good one. Let's see if anyone knows it. Or just what mm-hmm. restaurant, sir? Either what? way, we'll, we'll let either one slide. What restaurant serves mazithra and made mazithra famous? I don't know. Or what the, is the dish? I can tell you both. I don't know the dish, I just know the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to go now right after this. So <laughs> <I'm gonna be laughs> Let's go. Okay. Should we give any hints? No, no, no. Someone no, will figure no. it out. Let's see. Mm-hmm. I have no Googling, but people might Google. Well, you know what? That's okay. <laughs> mazithra is a, it's a hard cheese. It's like a ricotta salata, which is an aged ricotta. It's their version. Mm-hmm. It's the it's the Greek version, but it's a byproduct from the feta process. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if these guys in Australia make a, a mazithra type of cheese. Maybe. It's, yeah. it's very possible. Mm-hmm. But that's always, that's always the case in any of these places is that they, they, they make nothing goes to waste so they always make something with the whey or yeah. anywhere they make uh like in southern italy that they make um, a lot of cheeses with buffalo milk and in and these places like if you go visit them they make mozzarella ricotta but then they have like their own little stash of experiments in the back <clears throat> they have like cheeses hanging and like sausages they're making and they've got yes. um cheeses filled with like lemons and like all kinds of crazy stuff mm. They're like mad scientists, and then of course when we, when we visit them and we're, we, you know, we're, we're I'm a mad eater. <laughs> <laughs> well, we tell them, hey, we work for a cheese shop in, oh. in San Diego, California. They're like, oh, come see our secret stash. Yeah, <laughs> you know, try this. Yeah, so super. That's cool. why you should come on Benny Voyages with us. <laughs> we get the yes. we get the secret stash. <laughs> These random secret stash <laughs> things that are so good. Remember the Sicilian couple, of 80s in their 80s, yeah. making fresh ricotta every day. People would show up with their little Tupperware tubs. Yeah, that's right. To get it filled, yep. and there they are making the fresh cheeses and other ones too. Yeah, like literally every day. I think they were uh, in their 90s. Maybe I, I close. Yeah. But husband, wife, and then of course helpers. But I mean, uh, wow. Yeah, it's so super. We have a winner. Uh, what? So what did they get for the answer? Because <clears throat> I just know. Well, do you want to say it? No, you say it. I just know Spaghetti Factory. The old Spaghetti Factory. Congratulations, Donna. You are the winner of two. Cheers, Donna. to me. <laughs> Cheers. Um, glasses. Old Spaghetti Factory. It's mazithra with brown butter. Well, I knew so that. That's, that's the name of the that's dish. That's the dish. That is the name of the dish. There's no fancy name Mazithra. for the dish. No, but... Well, is it spaghetti? What's it's the spaghetti. pasta? It's, it's spaghetti. Yeah. Okay. Oh, definitely. It's spaghetti. <laughs> what else would it be? <laughs> it's a penne with... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it rigatoni? Is it... Spaghetti. spaghetti. <laughs> Macaroni? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> I, no. We should get into a, a pasta thing. Like, why all the different shapes and names? There's probably reasons for it all. Yes, that could be just... Mm. That, you could do a whole year on the pasta shapes. That could be one of the, the cooking... Varietals. One of the cooking classes we should do it. Yes, the different pasta shapes... Check, me, tell them. Check. Yeah. Donna, you're the winner. Old spaghetti factory. Mazithra and brown butter. So you could do ricotta salata and brown butter. Yeah. I think you could do pantaleo and brown butter. Yeah. That'd be delicious. It has the same texture, mazithra. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? I'm going to try one of these Kikos. Yeah. So good. You know the problem with bubbles, though? It makes me want to burp. <laughs> Go ahead. So if I do... Let it I, out. I'm going to say right now, I apologize. <laughs> Let it out. Homer, Homer Simpson. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm I'm the female Homer Simpson sometimes. All right, but, uh, so good. So and the marinated the oil cheese. Yeah, also mm. good with the raspberry. I did it with the apricot because mm. I remember in Australia we saw so many places that stuffed apricots with different cheeses, wow. and it's good with that. Yeah, for sure. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Okay, fun stuff. So <clears throat> okay, shall we? Next? Appenzel, Appenzeller. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, mine first. I'll, I'll take this one now. We are going to Switzerland, home of Roger Federer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and yeah. Swiss Mountain Dogs. Switzerland, and beautiful. Swiss cheese. Beautiful Switzerland. And fondue. 
Yes, every I mean, and Alp. so many good things. Mm -hmm. So many great cheeses. And roasty. Most of <laughs> and who? Going. It's a the potato dish. Oh. The potato pancake thing. Mm -hmm. I'll keep going. Just keep going. Raclette. You didn't say raclette. Raclette. <laughs> what else? <laughs> um, Monica is Monica Sellis from Switzerland. I don't remember. No. <laughs> it's Roger Federer yeah, from there. <laughs> There's another famous um, tennis player from there. I thought. Okay. The um, but their cheeses are pretty much. For the most part, they, we were just talking about how cheeses are pretty similar by region. Switzerland are cow's milk cheeses, almost exclusively, over 90%, I would say. There's, yeah. there's a few goat's milk cheeses in there. I don't know. I don't know if I've seen any sheep's milk. They're probably there. Probably but. there, but I've never seen an Alp. No. No, the sheep don't like the Alps. Just know, mm -hmm. like when we say Alpine style, that really means cow's milk. It um, so th this is as traditional it gets. This is mm -hmm. this is from a region called Appenzell. There is um, Appenzell is two regions. It's inner like inner Hoden and outer Hoden or something like that. <laughs> She's laughing at me. That's not cool. It's not cool. Here, hold on. I have I have the word. Let me. I'm gonna read it. Okay. See if I'm I can gonna pronounce see the it correctly. word. Does it have the little dots? You know what the dots are called over the um, letters. Umlaut? Umlaut. Well done. Umlaut? <laughs> yes. Okay. Appenzell Osserhoden or Appenzell Innerhoden. <laughs> <laughs> that German language is very difficult. Well, school it's me. Not, so teach me. No, there's no way to teach you because it's like all, all back here in the throat. No, and guttural. Yeah. So we'll just say it's a delicious <laughs> raw milk cow cheese, raw cow milk cheese from Switzerland. Appenzell from the Appenzell There's, region of Switzerland. Sometimes they break these regions into into like two or three, like a north or south or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's something like that. Yes. Appenzell. Over, under, high Alps, yeah, low Alps. They you. have all those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Appenzell is is as traditional as it gets. Yeah. There's um. It tastes like an Alpine. I mean. It's it's yeah. not that strong right now. Mm -hmm. They have some that are are um, stinkier, stronger. Sometimes if they um, if they wash the rind and kind of like leave it a little wetter, yeah, um, it'll it'll be a little bit stinkier, more mushroomy. There, there's another there's a cheese that we featured kind of recently called Sharfamax. We um, I, I feel like we tr we had that one within the we last did. couple of months. We did. Mm -hmm. And Sharfamax is basically Appenzell. It's Appenzell is the cheese that's been made in that region for centuries i mean if not centuries m millennia <laughs> it's it's <laughs> yeah. been made forever and sharper max is a, was a newer cheese and they just because these are this is a traditional one and they, they make it the same way every time they can't kind of like sway from the recipe at all yeah that's tradition yeah yeah so some of the newer cheeses that have come out have just they've tweaked the appenzell recipe a little bit but this is this is probably how this cheese tasted Way back. in Charlemagne's time, you got all sorts of <laughs> noises, sound saying. effects. I'm like, sound effect I'm like the guy from Police Academy. <laughs> yeah, no, this is this is so Swissy to me, for sure Swissy. I'm not sure that I care for it so ah. much with the bubbles, though. It's interesting. I don't know if anybody else chimes in. I think it's okay. I think the others were much more complimentary. I don't know. They just made the wine bubbles blossom, um, mm. but. It's not bad, but it's it's interesting because I was hoping that the Alpine would be a little more. Here's what I'll say about that. This is this is going to be my silver okay. lining. Oh. Alpine cheeses, okay. especially something like this, they are so they are so full flavored and so complex mm -hmm. that you don't need anything with it. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna agree. Like I'm almost I, enjoying this one just with on its own. Yep. Here at the end, I don't need any accoutrements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, um, mm -hmm. I mean, these are, of course, the famous melting cheeses, but they are so good just to kind of snack on as is. Yeah. These are my favorite style of cheese. Mm -hmm. All time. What about breakfasts in yeah. the Alps? Oh my God. Just the plate of the cheese and the fresh rolls mm -hmm. the simple, oh, and, and just, yeah. uh, you don't need anything else, like you said. I mean, I would take jam and butter, but doesn't need it. But I mean, mm -hmm. even but even take use these cheeses in, in some of like the the great um, like even American breakfast dishes and, and you can if you do like a quiche and do Alpine cheese or yes. do a, like a Monte Cristo 
with with an oh, alpine. Oh, with an cheese. alpine. That changes everything. Because like a quiche typically like cheddars and stuff, right? I mean, you put the alpine in, it, yeah, it um, raises it a notch. It kicks it up a notch. Uh huh. <laughs> Emerald. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Boom shaka laka. Again, the rosemary Christian suggestion. I agree with the. I'm going to with that um, with Appenzeller. the Appenzeller. You know why? Those cows, Kristen, I mean, they eat all these grasses yeah. and stuff. I'm sure they eat rosemary as part of their diet. Yeah. Um, so it, it's so complimentary together. Yeah. I Super know. delish. Oh, I need this for my dish tonight. Don't eat the rest. I just realized I could use this in my What own. are you making tonight? Chicken. Hmm. Yeah. So. Rosemary mm-hmm. chicken? Uh, yep. Now it's rosemary chicken. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm. yeah. That is so good. So, so good. So I love them all. Did you try anything with the kiwi? You have no, not tried I, the kiwi I, I, yet. I didn't, I didn't Anybody tried the kiwi? kiwi. I, didn't, I think a fresh one has more kiwi flavor, but this to me is just candy. Yeah. But anyway, it's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. You know, I like the seed. The seed tastes good. Yeah. Is it because it's crunchy or why do you like this? I don't know. Just something a little different. But it's, uh, oh my gosh, you're right. It's definitely, uh, it's just like candy. <laughs> but I, I will say, the the color on it we we do care about color on plates it is it's now when did, how has we have food to say, become it has to be instagrammable it has that's to be what i was gonna beautiful. say is that a new word it is dictionary? it's a word and we oh, have to think yeah. about how it looks on the gram on the gram yeah it's crazy i think feel that sometimes the italians don't care so much so their dishes are so simplistic you know mm-hmm. what i mean mm-hmm. they don't and aren't they're just looking for it to be Simple and delicious, and I kind of want to go back to that. But now we have to add the colors, and colors are fun. They're delicious. Oh. Yeah, not gonna complain. I'm, thinking, I, I'm not a, um, I'm not really a grammar. I don't really know much about it. You're not myself. a grammar. I'm not a grammar. I have bad grammar. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not really into the Instagram. But I, I will say it, it did. Uh, I remember when it all when it took off, and it was, it was really, it was kind of a. a a turning point for the, our platters in a way. Yeah. Be- because it, it became art. It became more it became art, art and mm-hmm. they, some of it went viral. Some of the, the photos, mm-hmm. and uh, and then we even had like a healthy competition between all our shops because we have an Instagram for oh, each yeah. of the shops. That's true. And I remember the North Park <laughs> shop was like the one that took the lead first. Uh-huh. They had the mm-hmm. most followers, and everyone yeah. was and we reposting. Were to catch them. Yeah. And uh, so it's. I mean, it's been a good thing. I always. Everyone wants to out-design yeah. the other person. Just because I don't understand it doesn't mean that it's, there's anything wrong with it. I say more more power to you, Instagram. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. No, but it's all beautiful. It's good ideas. Well, you eat with your eyes. They say this, yeah, right? Yeah, it's so you true. Can, yeah, so. Yeah. I mean, and it's good. I love them all. Oops, I digress. Let me go back here. Um, yeah, any any questions we didn't answer? Are we? Are we uh... Yeah, so George, a lot of people love everything with the rosemary. Yeah. Kristen does, George does, the Appenzeller on its own or with rosemary. Yeah. Um, and yes, George, good for a fondue. Appenzeller should be a must in a fondue. It could yeah. be, a, it, it even kicks a notch above Gruyere, if you mm-hmm. ask me. Ooh. Just with a little bite mm-hmm. um, sometimes. So, yes. Fondue, um, here's the tip for fondue. Get like five different cheeses. Yeah, blend them. That's yeah. why fondue was created. They um, used up their old bits. So never just <clears> use one. Yeah. Two, one note. <laughs> Do different ages. Even You can even throw in like, get crazy, throw in, a, throw in a little blue cheese or throw in a little cheddar. Or is that sacrilege? <laughs> I believe in the world, everything being inclusive. So you want to mix worlds. So I think mixing alpines with cheddars is fine. Thank you so much. I was going to have to cancel you. <laughs> She's out. She's out. Uh, one more time, we had a question, uh, Rob, on the little chocolate-covered things. These are chocolate-covered Kikos. So Kikos are Spanish corn nuts. Yeah. That's the best way to describe them. I think they're just a little lighter than our corn nuts, but they're, they're puffed corn. I mean, they're, they're like... Giant corn. Yeah, they're bigger. They're mm-hmm. like... They're like uh, I don't know. They're they're just like monster giant corn nuts kind of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, they're so good. It, it it seems kind of like oh wow, salty, crunchy, but it, it really works. It's really more complimentary and textural yeah. to, to cheeses, but it works really well. I I really like serving the the corn nuts with with crunchy cheeses. It sounds it sounds kind oh, of oh you weird. like the crunch and crunch yeah. I was just gonna say the, with the brioche savarin and the crunch and cream. You can go either way. <laughs> I'm just saying like I wouldn't I wasn't expecting to like the crunchy with the hard cheeses, but I I kind of do. 
But then it makes you really thirsty, then you just gotta drink a lot. <laughs> Is that a problem? I don't no, know, I think it's okay. Yeah. yeah. Should serve those in bars. No, super, super good. Well, that was, I liked it, and I love this. I'm going to get my special, I have a special bubble stopper. Oh yeah? So that I can keep this for the two hours it's just gonna last. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, uh, do you, does that really have a purpose in your house? Probably the not in our house, okay. but um, I, I hear people could keep it for a couple days. Yeah, that's I've never, sad. never experienced that, but <laughs> I think it can be done. Um, what's up next, Rob at oh. the AOC? Um, we're doing pizza at some point oh, soon. Yeah. Pizza, let me look. Pizza is a Sunday. Mm-hmm. I know that we're is doing twenty first. What's mm-hmm. the next? Is that next? You're or dying with the divas. Is it appetizers? Yeah. Appetizers, next? cheesy appetizers. Mm-hmm. I, <clears throat> cheesy appetizers with the divas. What's the date? Uh, the nineteenth. But you're doing agave. Oh, which goes, yeah, with the Don Fuliano. Don saying it. Don Don Fulano. Fulano. Mm-hmm. They do several different uh, expressions of agave. Okay. And they will be um, they will they'll be joining me. I think we'll probably broadcast from one of the shops that night. Oh, fun! It's um, I think it's a Sunday night. Maybe the 14th. Does that sound right? Uh, yep, 14th. Mm-hmm. And their representative will be there with us. And, and then the kits will come with four little agaves to taste. So mm-hmm. different expressions. So different ages of tequila. Like that. Expressions. Mezcals, whatever, they, whatever they've got. I've heard them say it. So I'm, I'm just I'm stealing. I'm <laughs> You're stealing, stealing their words. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like it. But next Wine Wednesday. So it is back to the two-week schedule. We just have to do a bump. Is the 24th? You know where we're going with this? Uh, Merlot. Or we're going sideways. We're going, we're going Merlot. 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 No stinking Merlot. I, um, we're going to love this Merlot. I loved that movie. It's old. It's like 1993. No. Yes, no, it is. No it is. Yes, way. it is. I was I don't believe it up. It. Yes, it was. Because the wine, I had to learn. I already The wine is delish. Um, really? Yes, it's, it's, it goes back. So I don't we're going believe to go you. to the stinking Merlots. I don't believe you. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> what year was Sideways? <laughs> what, it's what, in the 90s. Shouldn't your Alexa be answering us right now? <laughs> <laughs> um, you would think. No, because Paul Giamatti, he didn't become famous until like the 2000s, oh. I thought. No, it oh. goes way back. I don't know. We'll have to see. But yeah. it's right. going to be fun. Fine. Delicious. Merlot. We're going to bust the myth, just like with Riesling, yeah. that Merlot's... Stink when the Merlots can be very good. Merlot was like mm-hmm. the red wine that my parents always ordered when we were out. 2004. 2004. Oh, I knew it. Why do I get busted every our time? Fact, our <laughs> fact checker back there. <laughs> He's like, you guys are lying. <laughs> All right, sideways 2004. I obviously. The do only reason know. I know that is because, um, not I was, was going to say Bart Giamatti. That's his dad. Oh. His dad, Bart Giamatti was the commissioner of baseball. What? And he, he died in 1989. And I remember that year, it was a big deal. They were talking about it during the World Series because that was the most memorable World Series in my childhood because it was the Giants versus the A's. It was the Battle of the Bay. And, Bar- and then his son became a famous actor, Paul Giamatti. Paul Giamatti. Ah. And he's, a, he's like an incredible, not just an actor, he's like an amazing oh, yeah. actor. No, he's awesome. But anyway, I, we digress. We digress. As we do. Hey, we As it tends to. It's really when more about storytelling, right? It is. It's, 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 it's the chronicle. It's the cheese chronicles. <laughs> you go where you go. We, that's what you we learn do. a little, and then you eat a lot, and you have a good old time. George asked me to say raspberry one more time. <laughs> so yes, George, I cannot say raspberry. There's a story behind that. I say raspberry now. I think it sounds more elevated. I sound so much more smart when I say that. Don't I? Uh, okay. <laughs> 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 on that note sure. yeah so it's time for me to start making chicken <laughs> I'm going to finish the rest of this because like I need it um, thank you Robbie G as always for your nuggets of wisdom I try you, yeah, thank you're, you you're, you're sharing nuggets left <laughs> and right that's the that's the fun of it is to share and experience this together mm-hmm. in another another fun Wino Wednesday with all of you so thank you yeah. all for joining us and we will see you again yeah in soon, the future hopefully and Donna be in touch to get you your glasses Cheers, everyone. Uh, there's no theme tonight to say au revoir. Good night. <laughs> it's just a ciao. See you. Catch Have you later. a great night, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye.